Guten Gardening, everybody! Well, today's video is one I'm excited about. It's one that I've been thinking about for the last couple of weeks, ever since the new USDA Plant Hardiness Zone map came out. And I've been thinking about this because I wanted to consider the best way to approach talking about this. You see, I saw article after article after article about the great changes of this new map and how there are different parts of the country now in different grow zones, different hardiness zones, and so there's this potential to grow all of these new plants, maybe in some of your areas where, where you saw changes as much as an entire growing zone. But that got me thinking about what the purpose of the map truly is and how we can use it and maybe some best practices around that map. And so whether you're brand new to gardening or you've been gardening for years, I hope what I say and what I talk about in this video will be one, meaningful, and two, something that you can agree with as we get started talking about this new USDA map. Now, I want to divide this video into a couple of different parts, but the first part, I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about the history of this map. Because the first USDA hardiness map was created in 1960. So now we're talking about 65 years ago, nearly 65 years ago. And the purpose of that map was really, my understanding is anyway, the purpose was to create a visual representation to help gardeners to better understand their climates in their specific areas so that they and i say they because i wasn't alive then but so that they could better pick the fruits vegetables etc that would be a fit for their growing area now that map has been updated about every 10 to 15 years i actually saw a cool website where it showed the transition the change from 1990 through 2006 version of this map but the map that we've been using most recently at least before this most recent update was from 2012. and so even from 1990 to the last version of this map you can see some of the shifts in those cold temperatures some movement for those lower growing zones so historically we've seen this map change over those 65 nearly 65 years to reflect the average weather patterns. So hopefully you have a better understanding of the historical aspect and why the map was first created. And gardeners have definitely been using this for years. And I would say, if I take this to a personal level, how we first used this map, especially as newer gardeners, is it gave us a kind of baseline, a, a suggestion, if you will, as to the plants that over the past and I'll say this, they typically take a data point from each of the past 30 years to get that average coldest temperature in your area. So it gave us a, a baseline to say, these are the plants that should be okay in your area. And so I referenced this briefly, but I think it's important to understand how the hardiness zones on this map are then calculated because what they typically do is to take the last 30 years and pick the coldest point during each of those seasons and then average that out and they get to this overall average coldest temperature and that's the hardiness temperature so you do get an average you do see what it was historically but this is where i start to think about the value of this map and how we should use it as gardeners because I'm a really big fan of using this map as a good place to get an idea, like I said, a baseline. I like the fact that the newest map, actually this is a super cool feature and I'll show you right now, the newest map allows you to search by zip code and it is far, far better quality than the previous map. You can get right into your area and see specifically what they say your average coldest temperatures would be. That hardiness area that, that gives you a really good indicator but i'm definitely a big fan of believing my own eyes over anything else and this is where i think you have to be i'm not going to say the word wary because i don't think that that's really the term i'm looking for but maybe aware you have to be aware that just because something is the average of a point over 30 years that doesn't negate the fact that you could have 
a massive cold streak. That doesn't negate the fact that you could have temperatures that... I'll give you an example. A few years ago here in Zone 5, Wisconsin, we had a polar vortex come through. And with the wind chill, it was something ridiculous. It was like 45, 50 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. Is that the average cold temperature? No, but we had four or five days where it was so cold. Well, if you average that out over 30 years and you only have one spot like this, your hardiness zone isn't going to necessarily look like so cold, if you understand what I'm saying. So what I would say is this. I, I think it's exciting. I think the idea that there is a potential opportunity for some people to grow more Maybe some people who have shifted zones a little bit can grow things that typically would have been grown in a warmer zone. I think that idea of pushing boundaries is fantastic. We do that all the time here. I mean, we have this indoor growing area that I'm in right now. This is pretty cold out there, but we, we try to push the boundaries of what we grow here. What I'm not going to do, though, is to suddenly say, well, if this map says that I've shifted growing zones and now I've got a, a new variety of fig that before I had to winter indoors, but I'm just going to plant it right in the ground and everything's going to be fantastic. I wouldn't make that decision personally, because as much as I have seen some of the things that I see in this map is definitely being accurate. I mean, we have seen warmer summers, we've seen some earlier springs, we've seen some later falls, we've seen some of that here in zone five. I'm not at a point yet where I'm going to say, I'm gonna take this tree and throw it in the ground because I know that there's the possibility of many other factors. There's microclimates where you could see warmer temperatures, you could see colder temperatures. There's a lot that goes into it. And what I would say is that any changes we make here are far more gradual than saying, here's a new map, here's a new growing zone, here's a new hardiness zone, go ahead and just go ahead and plant stuff. We allow that transition to happen over time. As we're seeing success with something, we start moving in that direction. As we're seeing the, the fall season maybe stay warmer a little bit longer, we can plant a little bit later, maybe into the fall season. As we see the summer getting a little hotter a little bit earlier, maybe we plant a little bit earlier in the spring. But we still have an understanding that all it takes is one massive cold streak, one massive uh, anomaly to wipe everything out. And so we're still careful. So is it exciting that there's a new map? Uh, for those of you who want to try pushing your grow zone limits, maybe a little bit, yes, I would say so. I'd say have some fun with it. I'd say experiment around with it, but I wouldn't say go overboard just because there's this new map and maybe you've shifted zones slightly. Instead, believe your own eyes, believe your own experiences and truly, no matter what I say on this channel, no matter what I show you on this channel, you always need to base your successes on what works for you. And that's the, that's the advice I give you here. Have some fun. Go out there and try growing something new. We may see a consistent change in this direction. We may see shifts away from this. I don't know what the future holds for this any more than anybody else does, but I do know this. We let our experiences here lead the way for us. And so as we can start adding new plants, we'll do it slowly. We'll try our best to make sure we have minimal loss. We'll try our best to make sure that we're growing the food that we need here for our family that's going to make us successful, that's going to give us the nutrients we need for the entire winter long. And that's exactly what I plan to keep doing. Well, folks, I hope this video was informative to you. You know, it's, it's such an interesting thing to see a whole bunch of news articles about gardening and getting people excited. And as, as I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Now, all that being said, if there's something that you want to grow because you're in a newer growing zone and maybe you have some opportunity to try something new, what is that going to be? Let us know in the comments. Hey, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a like. Leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.